Hi, Derek. Thank you for joining us today. Um, first question for you. Please briefly introduce the company and its flagship products. So Avoca is a software company and our product, Avoca Transact, is a platform for building better customer acquisitions or onboarding journeys. So banks, financial services companies are using our product to deliver exceptional experiences for things like account opening, loan applications, and even onboarding people into business banking products. Why do you think customer experience, i.e. CX, is the key thing in banking? Uh, it's simple. Um, products and price are so similar across the institutions that uh, if a bank is going to differentiate, they have to differentiate on the basis of their customer experience. And it's important to remember that people don't want to bank. They need to bank. They want what banking can facilitate. There, there are basically four things people are looking for. They want somewhere safe to keep their money. They want easy access to their money when they need to use it, you know, whether it's buying a cup of coffee or paying a bill. Um, they want the ability to save and grow their money for future purchases or needs. And they want access to additional money for large purchases like, like a home or a car. You know, they want access to money when they don't have enough. So as a result, because banking is really there to facilitate these other things that I want, banking needs to be convenient and efficient. Uh, in fact, PwC did a survey just last year, and when they surveyed people about what's important in digital experiences and financial services, the two things that came out as being critical were convenience and efficiency. So if the bank starts with that principle in mind and they build an experience around that, around convenience and efficiency, they will win. So what do you think are the common mistakes that banks and financial institutions make while onboarding new customers? They design from the inside out. They, they look at how the bank wants to onboard a customer or originate a loan. So they, they think about their internal processes and then they design an experience from that perspective uh, and impose that on the customer. And uh, what they really should be doing is they should be looking at the customer and designing from the customer in. Uh, obviously, we need to line up. We need to make sure that the information we're collecting from the customer, the documentation, all that stuff, matches what the bank needs in order to onboard that customer and meet their regulatory compliance requirements. But just changing that paradigm, shifting, looking from the customer in is, uh, is, is the way to win. It's, it's not, you know, forget about your internal processes. Don't design from the inside out, design from the customer in. So how can Avoca help them improve the onboarding processes? Well, architecturally, our platform supports that ability to design from the customer in. We, we create separation between the customer experience and that can be digital, mobile, branch, call center, whatever those channels are, we create separation between those channels and the core banking systems. And that separation allows the bank to design a great experience, but then we'll transform the data to match what the core banking system needs. Um, in addition, we also, we deliver that omni-channel experience. So we allow uh, the customer to use whatever channel or device they want. So they can start on the mobile phone, they can finish in a branch. They can start in a branch and if they can't finish the application, they can go home and finish it on their laptop. So supporting that omni-channel experience allows the customer to engage with the bank the way they want, not how the bank wants them to. Um, we also provide a catalog of pre-built integrations for things like identity verification, fraud prevention, uh, uploading photo identity documents. So we're opening up that world of fintech innovation and making it accessible to the bank. And then the last piece is the analytics that we've built into our platform, which help the bank identify experience hotspots. So where are people abandoning? What are, what are the specific questions or sections of the application flow that are causing problems? Uh, and by understanding where those problems are, the bank can continuously improve the customer experience. So we've seen examples where a bank has put a disclosure um, into an application form, a little block of text, just a paragraph of text, 
and people don't like it. They read it and they go, I'm not comfortable with this. And they're abandoning the application flow. But the kind of analytics that we have is giving the bank those insights. They're saying, hey, that block of text is causing a problem. We're losing people here or you're losing people here. Um, so let's give them an opt out. Let's move it. Let's reword it. Let's do something um, that's going to make it less intimidating. Finally, what in your opinion, are the trends and advancements that we could expect to see in the future? Look, there are lots, but there are two that um, I'm really passionate about at the moment. The first is biometric enabled onboarding. Um, in the future, smartphones are actually going to become our identity. At the moment, your wallet or your purse is kind of your identity. You know, it's got your driver's license, it's got other cards in there that you use to prove who you are. But in the future, that will actually be your smartphone. Your identity information will be on your device and you will use biometrics to unlock that information and choose who you want to share it with. So when a bank comes to you uh, saying, well, to open a bank account, you need to tell me who you are. We need to meet our KYC requirements. We will use biometrics to unlock that information on our device and then share it with the institution. And I honestly think that onboarding will become as simple as putting your fingerprints on a fingerprint scanner or, or looking at your device and doing facial recognition to unlock information that's subsequently shared with the bank. And then we'll just accept the disclosures associated with the product. Um, so that's the first one is that biometric uh, enabled onboarding. The second one is embedded banking. Uh, so Chris Skinner in the fintech world calls it invisible banking. Um, I prefer to use the term embedded banking. And what we mean by that is banking will become embedded in the products and services that are the things that we're actually looking for. Uh, so a really simple example of this that's been around for years is car loans. You go to get a car, there's probably a bank facilitating that loan, but you don't go to a bank to get the loan. You get the loan through the dealership. So the banking product, which is an, a car loan, has become embedded in the dealership in the place where I'm actually thinking about what the banking product can facilitate. Um, but we can extend that into other opportunities. So when I enroll in university as a student, why can't I get a student account through my enrollment of the university? Why do I have to go to a bank or even to a bank website to get a, a student account? Why can't the university just facilitate that? There's still a bank there. But I don't actually have to go to www.banknam.co.uk. I don't have to go to the bank's branch. The university just shares my information with my permission with the bank in order to establish the student account. Um, same can happen with employment. I, I join a new company. They can share my details from the payroll or HR system with an institution in order to establish not just a current account for my salary, but maybe a savings account maybe a pension, maybe a wealth management product, maybe life insurance. So that one source of information being the HR or the payroll system could then be shared with one or more institutions to actually provide those banking products. Um, I live in Colorado, uh, we ski, and my ski pass that gets me onto a chairlift can actually be used to buy uh, souvenirs in the gift shop, can be used to buy lunch uh, in the, the ski lodge. So. The ski lift pass has become a, uh, a stored value for my cash so that me, my wife, my kids, we can all actually make purchases using our, our, our lift pass. So I think a lot of banking products and services are going to become embedded in places where we're thinking about what they're, what they're doing. And I, open banking, the API economy are all making that kind of stuff possible. Thank you.